Alrighty, so before we begin this episode, I want to take you guys over here to Cottonwood Cove real quick. Because fun fact, I forgot something in the last episode. So remember how I said we were looking for a rare weapon? We were looking for a fancy weapon? Well, it turns out it is here, but I checked the wrong part of the building. Sure, I got the uh, Machete Gladius, but that's not what I was looking for. What I was looking for was Recompense of the Fallen, which is actually in the same building that we were in, but it's upstairs instead of down, so... Before we actually start the intro, I just want to get some footage of me grabbing it, because I know when people actually show up, they're going to be like, Tim, why didn't you actually show us you getting this? What if it's important? Nope, just go through here. Spawn in. Steal it from his desk. Along from with the two pencils. As I have thought about it, like, if I'm going to collect all these weapons what's the point because I'm not gonna show them right well I have been thinking about it maybe I should show them maybe I should make a compilation of all the weapons in the game that I can find now for the clothing I'm not too sure about that because I'd have to do that for guys and girls so I don't know that's a lot of work but anyways let's go ahead and start the actual intro at the Mojave Drive-In. And we got our sound check. Alrighty, so. Hey, kiddos, welcome back to another episode of Fallout New Vegas. We are at the Mojave drive through We got the weapon that we needed just really quickly. And, uh, yeah, this is how you start it. In order to start this DLC, Old World Blues, you have to be here at night. And here is the radio that you can get for that. We can go to it real quick. I think it's Mysterious Broadcast. I think that's it. The Sierra broadcast. Okay, happy trails. What is this? I don't know what that is. Okay, so this level doesn't actually have one. The burned man walks. Joshua Graham lives. Well, we're not worried about that. Now we gotta go to this thing. This satellite will take us to Big Mountain, which ironically is not a mountain. It's a crater. Recommended for people that are 15 level plus that's fun i can take anything that i can carry with me and i can return anytime after completing all the blues that's fun i have everything that i want to carry with me yep i've got the super sludge for money recompense the phones i could just store all right we're good to go let's do it In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology, for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force field particle research, autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the dome. 
a huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war, fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the mines and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the Big Empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question. Hmm. Interesting. And now we are here. We get our own little penthouse, just like the Lucky 38, except this one is called the Sink. You feel strangely heavier. A quick inspection on your body reveals faint surgical scars. Ooh. Welcome to the big end. Oh no, it's actually em Oh, never mind. <laughs> I still have my rifle, but I'm in an outfit. So here it is. Here's the big empty. God, I missed it. What time is it? Hey, um. Interesting. Wow. Okay. It's weird being back here after so long, but... Sink. Where all of my friends await. Storage cabinet. Ooh! Okay, there's for crafting. Reloading bench. Personality files missing. Okay, so there's multiple personalities. There's a book shoot. There's an auto dock. The sink. Light switch. Toaster. Uh, jukebox. Buggy. And then, oh, mad scientist craftsman hats. I think I'm going to use this trunk here to store what I don't want to carry with me. There we go. Oh wait, there's more. Not in there. A second light switch. Sink, biological research station, and that's it. That's all who talk. But they can't talk yet. They're brokey. So we got to go ahead and fix them. Sarsaparilla. Drink the Nutricola. I'm gonna take some of these books. So 
Open the weekly. I don't know if I actually need that. Guns, Mentats. A strange feeling of pacifism comes over you and you find you cannot draw your weapon. Interesting. The brains! Ooh. I thought I heard the pacification field kick in. Alright, nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder! You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain! The collective geniuses of... We! Why, Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, H? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm a robotical engineer. Eight is sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now... Now... Great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? Did... Did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Boros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite. Here, in the dome. Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse. Now we've got lobotomites. Dala, get the spray before it excretes all over everything. Dr. Klein, if my hypothesis is correct, this lobotomite is the repository of the brain we sent the signal to. The skin envelope once containing it. If so, it's proof that there may indeed be something beyond the crater. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. I know what it is, Dollar. I want to know why it's down here. With its... its limbs all over everything. And... are those... Penises I see wriggling on its feet. Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Little teddy bear toes. Penises are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. I don't recall a human penis ever being that large. It depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static, these lobotomites confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. Did they just say I have a big dick? <laughs> Anyways, that's fine. Hold up one finger, point itself, point at them, hold up five fingers. Interesting. I don't know what that's going to do, but let's find out. Now it's holding up an array of fully erect hand penises. If it tries to insert them, activate vivisectors. Dr. Klein. Wait. I... I don't believe those gestures were random. Random at all. It's been following our conversation. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boris's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Ace, have you been in the mentats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are. As usual, Lobotomite, do you understand me? Can you speak? Yes, I can. Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. It's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? 
Our efforts have turned against us. In playing God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled the skin below with awareness. A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait. If what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us. Then this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein, a transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us. It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain, Big Fools, oh, it is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone, a zone that is here, forbidden to you! Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine. Even the technology sealed in the big mountain research centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are they going to do? There's no way we can reach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius and the technology that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. Was Ask the lobotomite for help? Hey, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pods checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, it is clearly intelligent, perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. We removed your brain, yes. So soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils. The Tesla coils. The coils of Nikola Tesla. Ooh, my brain was replaced with advanced technologies. My head can no longer be crippled and is resistant to chem addiction. And shock from bodily damage. Yeah, ain't no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the, what, the, um, uh... The Tesla coils in its head! This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. Darla, was it necessary this time? I assume full responsibility. 
I take my duties in the prodding and excision of living, breathing tissue quite seriously. Although, in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cutting to all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First, was the heart. Oh, okay. I cannot be poisoned. Well, the filters and... Oh, so you know what's crazy? I can keep these and take them back to the Mojave. Oh, so fuck you, Casadors. I can't be poisoned now. Oh, wait. I mean, second was the heart. Brain was burst. Third was the spine. Okay, my torso can no longer be crippled, and my strength and damage threshold have been increased by one. Spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. That auto-dock junk heap was one of Mobius' creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius. Flush! That is the sound of flushing. By the Fisher of Rolando, enough of this biological surgery talk. Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. With science? Ooh, okay. That is correct, yes. I hope you're not demonstrating resentment now. If you are, well, we can't have that. We have no idea! This line of questioning isn't important to us right now! Why are you asking these tangential questions? Stop it! We need these technologies. You need to get them. You must get them. You are equipped to retrieve the technologies with your primitive form. We are not. It's kind of embarrassing. You have hands, and uh, a heartbeat, sort of, and eyes, mostly the hands. There's door handles and lockers and... Enough! We need your help. Will you help us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, why not? Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eight transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um... They, well, move sometimes. Or get buried. Or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good. For us. The technologies are the X2 transmitter antenna array, used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic
a cardiac job in a sneaky stealth suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And AIDS sonic sound wave emitter projector gun. Able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great biogel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal, uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old world gestures lightly. What in logic is this? Keep your filthy penis tit feet out of our labs and secrets! There are things here no lobotomite was meant to see. Things that would astound and possibly terrify. Terrify! Yeah, we don't come into your lab and decant your solutions. Only the magnificence of our monitors allow for true comprehension of the wonders of Big Mountain. Shield your jellied eyes lest they burn from your skull. Ah, that is correct. You must walk upon your many penis feet. Much slower than our advanced hovering robotical frames. The little teddy bear could always run right into the pylon perimeter on its thick, turgid feet, returning it to us quickly and erectly. Yeah, directly. <laughs> erectly. <laughs> Wait, what? The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all. Get too close to the blinking posts, and the proximity warning shall be your warning. You are too close. If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shot off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module! Jesus Christ. <laughs> it is truly the end of all intelligence when the lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses. So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun, then what in Heisenberg's name do we need from X8? Anyone? I believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun. It was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged. We just don't know the frequency. And it is lost in X8. Just as X8 is forever lost to us. The sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Think Tattletail and all the kids you hated, you little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded?
Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's on ejaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding! Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. They nutted on my gun. Oh, so guns! What did it say? Spit lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray, filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If you're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burrows, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun! Guns! Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Done. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, lobotomite? Fine. Moros, more ammo. The good stuff. Top shelf ammunition. Let's see. Hollow point? That's worthless, but tasty. Oh, and here's some JFP. As if bullets need jackets. The JFP might make it ill and poop a lot, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. Hmm. Yes, I believe Watts Electronics tended to make the battery shelf life on the low end. They certainly did. Batteries for my vivisectors would always come up short right before a climax. I think Watts manufactured hollow discs. Or was it hollow tapes? Never can keep those two straight. Anyway, we're out of small energy cells. Dala. You have some? Why do we. Actually, never mind. I don't even want to know. And no, I don't want to handle your batteries. Just pass them on to the lobotomite yourself. <laughs> Damn, her vibrator doesn't work. <laughs> He's been sterilized too, right? The sonic emitter should be sterilized and more than enough for you to encircle your warm hands around. Cradling it gently with your finger muscles. Careful where you're pointing that. That device wasn't always a weapon. It was more like a force field kind of thing. Once. Force fields prevent us from moving. Forward or backward. They are irritating. The sonic emitter was specially designed to disable our own safety fields here in Big Mountain. When some of us lost our access passes, Dr. O. That only happened once! And I know you were behind still feeling my lab keys, Dalla. You formographer. Dr. O, you rewind that comment. Plenty of rewinding already going on in your formography tapes! Surprised that things don't snap out of their cases with repeated observations. Yes. Maybe. Well, no, not currently. Yeah, we lost.
lost that part of the schematics. Or Boros did. In one of his stupid labs. Or inside one of his stupid pets. It is lost. All questions lead to this conclusion. The blue fields within Berg Mountain shall be fielded with force. Forever. Fine, so... Yes, get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? But, it ought to climb. The bottom line will need rest. Recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers, so it might be stared at. My monitor radar is slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn the lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in. We can give it Mobius' old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet little... I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there with my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free has swayed me. Here, I present the Sync Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. Oh. I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What, like stuff? Things? Yes, things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trade the thing's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid ship chokes on them. All right. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simple need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. If I were not as intelligent as I am, I would feel as if perhaps I'm being tricked. Impossible. Oh. More. How do you make the lobotomite a bottle cap factory, Klein? Or better yet, give it a ton of things to activate the ship. Again, the logic of the request is clear. Tonnage is not needed, only adequate weight. Aaron, display your things. I do not understand, yet I am intrigued by this potential display. No, wait, you don't need to fill up the emitter again, really. I mean things for trade. Display for trade. All right, let's consolidate. There's gotta be some junk around here. Magazines, useless, more caps, medicinal supplies, useless. Here. Are there other chips? Are you echoing what he said, or are you asking for real? 
He's asking. Yes. Dr. Klein, there are many other personalities. If you recall, you hurled them off the sink balcony after your argument with Mobius. It is not an argument if one is clearly right and the other is clearly wrong. I remember now. Yes, Lobotomite. There are other chips. If you want, find them. I believe they're stored on holotapes in many of our facilities. But you should stay out of those. No exploring and discovering things. The Sink Central Intelligence should be enough for your... <laughs> needs. Yes, we may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go man your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children. Alright, well that was fun. You want to talk to him some more? Yeah, let's do that. I can't bring my weapon out, but I can learn some things. Doctor Eight. <laughs> Would you rather I called it the big shithole? Just because I'm going to be smashing a lot of shit. Nope. Repair. I lied. I'm going to be fixing things. Okay. And then... Check the perks at the bottom. Okay. Dr. Burrows. The lobotomite. The lobotomite animal before me. What other terrifying terrors will plague us in our quest for knowledge? Communists? Communist animals, perhaps? Be warned. Attempt to propaganda me. I will shriek as a frightened babe calling loyal cyber dogs to my aid. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Drama? There is no drama in science. As I learned in high school, science is an intellectual pursuit devoid of bestial emotions. Unless, of course, you are a communist. 
Like Betsy Bright, who sat next to me in math, and her smoking confederate, Richie Marcus. As I learned in my high school, American High, AHS, drama is for movies, things of fiction. Here in the think tank, the only star is science. Before you is the brain of Dr. Boros, head of animology, beastology, and DNA scrambling technology here at Big Mountain. I lay the bones and hearts of animals bare beneath my searing gaze, especially the dogs. I did so love dogs once, especially Gabe, that rascal. But there are many animals to shape. Industrious Cazadors, the happy-go-lucky Night Stalkers. They are my living, breathing DNA test tubes. Oh, so he made those. Fuck, idiot. They kept poisoning me. It's your fault. Indeed. Docile. Curious. Safe. Sterile. They are contained here at Big Mountain to preserve DNA and for observation. <laughs> Wrong. No, such creatures are found only here for research purposes. They would no more be capable of escape than breathing. I cannot expect a lobotomite to understand the careful surgical castrating procedures used in their creation. Perhaps a demonstration of my castrating power would settle your doubts. Impregnate you? What? Do you want to make me vomit inside my tank? The mere notion makes the edges of my biomed gel crystallize into asymmetrical patterns. Nonsense! That is what you speak. Nonsense! From beyond! I was at the top of my high school class in American High School. I knew facts. I knew figures. I knew data. We would know if our research was flawed. It is not! We never contradict ourselves, so do not even try! In 2000, let's see, carry the three, then count backwards with the great static, or beyond, there were the tarantula debates, and something about hawks which made it around. 2003, May, Tuesday, it was definitely Tuesday. Why are we even debating this? What you ask is of no importance. Mobius besieges us. There are more important things to worry about than data and facts. The malignant tumor that is Mobius plagues us all. His hunger for power, insatiable. From his lair in the Forbidden Zone, his terrifying robo-scorpion army clicks and whirs across the crater of Big Mountain, ever seeking, ever stinging. He must be stopped, or all of Big Mountain shall be destroyed. The radar fence protects us all. If evidence is correct, the one who built it is me. It keeps anything with a disembodied brain inside, like us. And anything without a brain, also inside. It is the ultimate defense against communist aggression. There'll be no infectious ideas on my watch. Trapped? Nonsense! We are secure here from evil philosophies. Ever since my anxiety-filled days of powerlessness and being bullied in American high school, I have dreamed of such security as the fence. 
That and giant cybernetic dogs that would ruthlessly patrol and kill anyone who wasn't my friend. Like Richie Marcus and Betsy Bright. Who's laughing now, Betsy? I hope you and Richie are happy smoking in your radioactive coffins. I'm glad you never came to my birthday party. No! Beyond is death, despite mounting evidence to the contrary. No matter where these strange humans wander in from with their ideas and new brains, there is nothing beyond Big Mountain. Enough! Stop filling my precious brain cell units with irrelevant data. You sound like the other visitors, making wild claims of a world beyond, where there is a war beyond war. It is unproven and unthinkable. Mother the other doctors with your crackpot theories. I have no time. None of us do. Hmm. Okay. Well, he doesn't like me, I guess. Talk to Klein. Mr. Klein! Have you done all we asked? If not, we will not hesitate to ask again. Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. Why, yes. We are filled with the knowledge you speak of. If you wish to know more, simply ask the others. They can help you. I am Dr. Klein, Chief Head Researcher of Logistical Operations and Ideology here at Big Mountain. I am surprised you have not heard of me. I am first in my field, first chair, as it were, back in the days of chairs. Dr. Mobius was... Not the horrifying creature you saw upon the screen, twisted by science. He was once one of us. A friend. He researched in directions contrary to the think tank. Brains, 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 always about the brains. So we exiled him. He says he left of his own volition, but that was to save him the embarrassment. Now he sends his intelligence consuming scorpions from the Forbidden Zone to plunder the secrets of Big Mountain. He is a menace. Dr. O is certain of his findings, and no one else in the think tank is willing to test the results. Loss of brain power. Terrifying. O has said on many occasions his inability to comprehend a Mobius' robo-schematics is because of repeated robo-scorpion stings. It's a side effect of the cerebral scrubbing. It won't stop you from excreting. Or asking questions, apparently. I have to correct that next time. Hormonal aggressive tendencies are actively suppressed, however. They are a no-no and not permitted in the think tank. The scrubbing also ensures your silence to keep Big Mountain safe. This facility is top secret, and you cannot speak of it to anyone outside of Big Mountain. Should have done it with the last batch and the anti-aggression scrub. Hmm. But I like to fight. <laughs> We had to take precautions after the last visitors. They caused a great deal of damage in a short time. Should have made sure they couldn't mention Big Mountain once they left. An oversight. Dr. Eight and Dr. O could tell you more. Dr. O more than Eight. The battle against the visitors damaged Eight's voice module. Suffice to say, those visitors are unwelcome. They stole a great many secrets and much technology. Impertinent. They also broke one of my trains. Hmm. That glowing red scar? That laser lobotomy canyon maze carved in the landscape? As if by some child? It is Mobius's fortress. From that hemorrhoidal fissure, he sends his amazing robo-scorpions to terrify and irritate us. 
He always tended to the dramatic. Ask Boros. I believe he knows more about the fence than any brain. Except maybe Mobius. Mobius was involved in the construction, if I recall. But he's such a hack, he probably was reading off Boros's notes and schematics. <laughs> yes. Wait, where are the other ones? Not you. It's you, Dr. Zero. Breaking news! Talking lobotomite arrives in Think Tank. Its purpose? Unknown. Undefinable. Its presence here? Unpossible. Oh? Oh, yes. I'm not going to bother correcting you. At least you got the doctor part correct. I can be grateful for that, at least. Stop the presses! Just in for my eye monitors. Is that Ron Kotek on your arm? It is! What's your agenda bringing that in here? How dare you bring Ron Kotek in here? What are you showing off? How great Robert House and his big company are? Ooh, we can make secure trials better than any robot those geniuses of Big Mountain could make. And they'll last a thousand years. Uh. You're lucky I don't have hands to tear that dip boy off your arm, or feet to stomp on its stupid metal guts. Ugh. Damn Robco. <laughs> Worry about house? What would I do this? Hope he died alone in a dingy room, straining his last remaining bodily fluids into jars. And him and his dirty girl bots. Don't even get me started on those filthy biological catcher's mitts. Fine. Ask. Yeah, I do. It wasn't always, oh. I just took that one by default, because sometimes it's easier to accept the mistake as long as the purpose works. I don't want to get into it. It's a sore topic with me. It makes my gel ripple. Great. Psychology. Clearly the worst of the sciences. Right after colosto diuretics. Okay, so my name is an O, never was. It was circular, a single character, digit, but not O. But even with enhanced sensors, no one here could get it right. I always kept seeing the letter, not the number. Yes, thank you. Zero. I am zero. How hard is that? A narrow, thin zero. Zero's my name. I'm proud of it, all right? It doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Truth be told, my emotional attachment to it doesn't even register compared to just having people recognize the difference. It's just that they're both sort of round and hollow, so when they monitor scan them, they assume that, oh, it's O. Vivisect me, please. What? <laughs> did... did I shoot myself with a brain heal beam or something? That's brilliant! I mean, I would have come to the same conclusion... eventually. Oh, uh, who am I deceiving? I never would have figured that out. I can't figure anything out. I'm... Uh, I'm useless. We're smart! Smarter than we give ourselves credit for. I was smart enough to talk to you, give you a chance, and now look what happened. I like your solution. With that kind of slash in the middle, I can set myself apart. If I wanted to. To make a zero in all the think tank, they won't be able to escape it. That diagonal slash right down the middle. Thanks. Talking to you, it really helped unclog some frustration. Talking. What a primitive form of thought kicking. You know, hearing my name said like that, it really derezzes my screens. As for discoveries, well, of course. Look at this. Just, uh, built it. Amazing, isn't it? You know what? I'm not even gonna pretend. I broke one of the monitors, and those innards start falling out everywhere. 
If you could just hold on to that for me until, well, forever, that would be welcome. I don't like to talk about it. Eight, he can't talk about it. They fried his voice module. Something good. It wasn't all the visitors, though. Only one of them got out of control. He's the one that took control of Little Yangtze, our old human farm. This human. I can't believe it. He broke out of the think tank in seconds. Then he went for Yangtze, got bomb collars, and started practicing on the subjects that were still there until he got the right frequency. We were sending robots to stop him, and he was slicing and cutting through their shells with some souped-up laser gun like they were cheese paper. When he hacked into the mainframe, A tried to stop him and got fried. Me? He rerouted my processors to take control of the train network here. If you see the tunnels with the trains plowed into them, you can thank our visitor for that. He wrecked the whole place. While we were trying to keep containment on the surface, Turns out he used one train to punch out a tunnel and escape. Sealed now. But... Elijah. It was Elijah. Two other human specimens. One arrived not long after the troublemaker. And the last one, not sure when he showed up, thought the first one was going to be lobotomized in Y-17. She got out somehow. The last subject, Klein might know more. He talked to him. And let him leave the think tank. Hope he knew what he was doing. Klein knows things we don't. And I think he told some of those things to the last visitor. Dangerous things that they ever got out. Hmm. I have a few left. Let me check. Yeah, there were a few under the monitors here. Here you go. Keeps the place tidy. Until our next... Okay. Talk to Klein, then talk to Dollar. Did you retrieve the t Hmm? Oh yes, the last visitor. Well, the one just before you. An interesting name from some language that's almost impossible to speak. What did we speak about? Melancholy fellow, the questions about uh, history? But our conversation got interrupted twice, I believe. Once when the trains got derailed, and then a second time. Oddly enough, now that I'm accessing my databanks, I don't recall what the second time was. Mobius's incessant transmissions keep distracting me. Also, we didn't brain scrub the visitor. He may have left with some knowledge he shouldn't have. I believe, maybe. Oh well, I'm sure it's of no consequence. I don't make many mistakes in calculation or perception, so probability favors me. Talking about Ulysses, the main antagonist of Lonesome Road. You are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank, fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear. Facing me, epidermis fleshed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words. Face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. Yes, yes, go on. Seeing your lips and mouth forming the words, both revolting and somehow... How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue? Like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouth cavity? What? Nonsense. What? What are you doing? Stop it. Why? Why are you making me partake in this filthy formography? Enough. I'm already 
intrigued. You have sufficiently percolated me. I don't know what it is about the biology of the bottom lights. It, it infects my thoughts. All that skin and muscle and tissue. Perhaps, perhaps there is value in what you say. I, I did so enjoy breathing once, long ago. Would you? I feel so ashamed, but yet so intrigued. You'll need to give me a rest in between visits, or else my gel might run over. If you're ready, let me radar scan you. Slowly. just came on me. Oh, shit. Well, I'm gonna put these in a fun place called right here, and I'm not gonna touch them anymore. Go in there, go in there. I don't want you to go away. Ew. Not that. I need that. There we go. That can have fun. It's the locker. I don't need the scrap metal. Why don't I keep taking that? Or these? Okay. Scoot boop. Drugs. Dr. Klein's glasses. He doesn't need those anymore, does he? Probably not. Okay, this is... I'm guessing Zero's room. This seems robotic -y. This is definitely Dollar's room. Okay, this is. Okay, eight room. I'd say it's eight. The radio. I can hear your penis tits feet dropping around. Uh, yeah, okay. This was No, this is eight room, definitely. I guess Mobius. Scientist Glow. Okay. 
I like the energy at least. Okay, nobody says anything. Alright, well, I say we go head out, we end the episode, and then we'll be right back. <laughs>